Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. So in case you're wondering about who I have here, I wanted to do a proper introduction to my little friend, Lucky. This is our new addition to the household. And we've had her for, well, she was a Christmas puppy. She was very small when we got her. So she's, she's grown a lot. She's um, really adjusting to her new environment. Still driving Lily a bit crazy, but we're making progress. But I don't know how long she's going to stay on my lap. I hope she doesn't pee on me because it's happened. She's still very much a baby, but she's, uh, she's getting better and she's growing and uh, we just love her. She's wonderful. It's wonderful to have a, a youngin in the household. But of course, Lily is always number one. Never forget that. But anyway, I'm here with a little bit of a, uh, a few things. I have a mini haul that I wasn't really expecting to do, uh, a mail opening, and a review of a book that I just read that I really loved, that I wanted to talk about. When that happens and I really like something, I like to share it. And also a movie to go along with it. So a little bit of a mixed bag. So let's start with the mail. This is from my friend James who has this amazing TikTok channel. He's also on Instagram. I'm going to put it all below. I, I've talked about him before. He does this hilarious uh, demon hunter character. It's really, really funny. I, I just met him yesterday for brunch. We are working on a project together, which I will be talking more about in the near future. But he does this thing called the Analog Horror Club, which I'll also link below. It's through his Patreon, where he sends out a uh, pen pal letters every month with a short story in it so this is cool he's got a little skull and crossbone stamp oh i really need to invest in a letter opener this is a problem okay so let's see what we have make sure i got everything okay so this is the sealed short story i think or the letter no this is the short story the Rise and Fall of Judas Black. So he writes a new short story every month and sends it out. And as you can see, this one's pretty long. So I'm going to read this one off camera. But I, I highly recommend that you check out his stuff because he, he's been a friend of mine for a long time. He is the guy that uh, I did a, oh gosh, it was a few, maybe two summers ago. I did a Jaws uh, discussion with him. He's like an expert on Jaws. So I'm going to rip through the seal. I need, I used to have one of these um, wax seals with my initials on it. I need to, eh, I'm trying not to rip it. He folded it like origami. Okay, so this was for the new year. This month's story revolves around aging rocker Judas Black. Well, that's right up my alley with my whole rock and roll horror theme. So I'll read that and, and share it with my next rock and roll horror review. Uh, based loosely on a hair band from Philadelphia called Heaven's Edge and my own personal experiences playing music in live venues. Uh, he was in a band back in the 90s or maybe into the 2000s. Heaven's Edge has the unfortunate experience of giving a record deal right of getting a record deal right before the music industry changed. Give them a listen on Spotify, Apple Music or whatever streaming service you use. Other inspiring elements include stories like Child's Play, the movie Magic with Anthony Hopkins, which I love. I just noticed that um, Lucky has one of Batilda's <laughs> eyelashes stuck to her. Oh my gosh. That happens. I thought it was a spider at first. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. I hope you join the Discord server I have set up. Please come in and introduce yourself. I am really bad with Discord. I have been invited to several of these Discord servers and I don't know, it just, I don't really, I never feel like I have the time to do it. So I never do it. It's hard enough like posting on my Facebook groups, but maybe I will try to check out James's uh, Discord. Again, I will list all of his uh, links because it's really worth checking out. So after I uh, had brunch with James, I popped into my favorite used bookstore in Newtown and uh, he didn't go in because I think he is on a book buying ban, but I'm really glad I went in because I found a real gem. This is Stephen King, Cycle of the Werewolf, illustrated by Bernie Wrightson. And I was just so happy to see this and I jumped on it. The illustrations 
are incredible. I don't want to bend the spine, but I've already started reading this. And I picked up The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue, I think it's pronounced, with a cool cover with Lon Chaney as the Phantom. I don't think I've ever read the book, The Phantom of the Opera. I've seen the Lon Chaney film. I, I saw the musical on Broadway at least once. And I, of course, I love the story and uh, all the movies and television and things that have been inspired by it. So maybe I'll do Phantom of the Opera for my next classic. I, I talked about doing like my classics corner. I don't know. It's a busy time. I'm trying to uh, do a lot of writing. So I don't know if I'll get to that anytime soon, but hopefully I will. I did also find uh, The Tale of the Body Thief by Anne Rice. This is the next installment in the Vampire Chronicles. And I thought I had this book, but I don't. Anyway, this will be, be my next Anne Rice book. I uh, probably won't get to it till March because I'm doing my whole VC Andrews thing. But yes, I'm, my plan to, to read all of the Vampire Chronicles this year in honor of Anne Rice and just because I want to. And then I found this, and I don't know this, uh, this is for kids. I don't know the, these books, but I just love the cover. The cover did look a little familiar, but maybe it's just the font and everything. This is called Fright Time, Three Spine Tingling Tales for Young Readers. And the cover there is very cool. If you or anyone you know collects these, let me know in the comments below. Maybe Cameron Chaney collects them. I know he collects a lot of juvenile fiction. Okay, so that's that. I wonder, I think I'm probably just gonna keep Lucky in my lap while I do the rest of this because she she really uh, wants my attention constantly, especially when I'm trying to write and she barks like crazy. But <laughs> I wanted a puppy, so this is it. But she's really cute. So I wanna talk about this book. Once in a while, you come across a gem that you have had on your shelf for years and didn't really know it was a gem. And she finally sat down and read it. And this is exactly what happened with this book called Thirst by Michael Sicilione. Now you wouldn't know it from the cover that this is kind of like a, <laughs> like a, a Fifty Shades of Vampire Sex. It's a, it's a very erotic uh, horror, not romance, there's a difference. It's definitely erotic horror. And I loved it. I thought it was great. In fact, I was reading this everywhere. I couldn't put it down. I took it into the bathtub with me several times. And as you can see, it got completely destroyed and uh, I had to tape the spine. I would like to find a, a good copy of this. I don't know if it came out in hardback, but I'm gonna look into this because this is the kind of book that I would love to read again sometime. It was great. And I just love when that happens when you discover a hidden gem, you know, something that you had no idea. I thought, oh, this is going to be like a typical kind of vampire. And it was just so much more than, than that. So let's take a look at this book. And I also discovered some interesting things about this author. So let's see. Cassandra Hall meets her new lover at a Greenwich Village poetry reading and sex with him is like nothing she's ever experienced. You can say that again. This, this book has some pretty crazy scenes in it. Uh, but Cassandra's new man has a secret he wants her to share. He's a vampire. And soon Cassandra descends into a deeper realm of exotic thirst and unspeakable passion, where she must confront the dark side of her own sensuality and where a beautiful rival threatens her earthly soul. Okay, that's a very basic overview of this book. It's, um, it, first of all, the book is pretty long and I really liked the way it was structured. It, it was not boring at all. Like I didn't get impatient with it. Like I do with a lot of books that are, you know, close to 500 pages, but it's all about this one character, Cassandra, but the way it's structured is very clever. First of all, it's beautifully written. Like the prose and everything is to die for. It's very operatic, very over the top, the kind of stuff I love. And it, I was just drinking this in, <laughs> I really was. I was so excited about it. I want to read everything this author has written now. And I'm saying this enthusiastically, knowing that there are probably readers out there who won't agree with me because it has so few uh, reviews on Goodreads and the reviews that are there are not that great. So take that with a grain of salt. If you're going to read this, you might not like it. Okay, but that's my caveat. Um, so it's set up where 
you have the same character in alternating chapters from before she was a vampire, when she's just like a normal person, she lives in New York. Oh, and that's another thing. The setting is great. It takes place in New York in the 90s, exactly the time that I lived in New York. And the way uh, it's described, I've, I've recognized everything, every street. It all takes place like in midtown Manhattan where I lived and even mentions the church that I was married in, <laughs> Holy Cross Church uh, next to the Port Authority. The way it was described, the, the street scenes, the clubs, uh, the restaurants, it really captures New York at that time. So it was a great nostalgia trip among other things. Yes, it gets into like S&M dungeons and this kind of thing. And, uh, and there were clubs like that in New York. I mean, I don't, I don't know if they're still there, but not that I went to them. But, uh, you know, I read about them. There was this uh, really uh, frightening, I remember, st uh, article, I think it was in the Village Voice, about a club where most of the people who attended the club had HIV. And so it was just like anything. Like, once you walked in those doors, it was just like anything goes. It was almost like a dance macabre, you know, to, of the end. And, and, any, and any pleasure, you know, was indulged. That kind of stuff makes for uh, interesting reading when, it, when you put in a horror setting. There's also a character in here named Rolando, who's her best friend, who is dying of AIDS. That was another thing that I found very moving about the story was exactly that time in the mid-90s, I had a friend who unfortunately died of AIDS. This is a really good friend of mine. We went through graduate school together. We only knew each other for about five years but during because we were in school together. But during that time, we were really good friends and... It was really horrible to see him go from a, you know, a fit guy in the, in the prime of his life in his 30s to dead at 40, you know. It was really, really awful. And there were scenes in this book at the hospital when she visited him at his apartment. It reminded me so much of my friend Mark. And, it, you know, it was moving. I was, I was crying during one of these scenes because, uh, because of that, because it just it really captured the feelings that I went through. And I loved the central character, Cassandra. She is, she's a smart, intelligent woman who's an artist who uh, is working as a window designer for a department store. So she's kind of not living her dream to be an artist, but when she meets the vampire, <laughs> a Julian, he, he tricks her, you know, he doesn't uh, tell her right away he's a vampire, but he, he challenges her to, you know, live the real artist life, like the decadent artist life, where you really challenge yourself to go into the depths of your soul, to experience pleasure, to taste the wine of every, you know, forbidden fruit kind of thing. That's what this story is really about. And that's really why I love it, because that's, that's really speaking my language. In a lot of ways, it was like an Anne Rice novel. But I have to say, with just a a more coherent plot. I love Anne Rice, don't get me wrong, and I'm really looking forward to reading the next book. And this kind of primed me in a way to read that book, but gosh, this was good. I, I really can't say enough good things about this book. It was a pleasure from start to finish. There was one point at the end uh, where I thought it was going to go in a different direction, and then it kind of, and I was kind of hoping it was going to go in that direction but it changed and I was a little disappointed, but that's just, you know, that's just that. Um, it, it could have maybe been a little shorter, a little honed down a bit, but I don't know, it was great. It was really, really great. And yes, it's very uh, sexually explicit, so if that's not your thing, you probably wouldn't enjoy this, but if you're looking for an intelligent exploration of that kind of thing, again, highly recommend it. I am going to read everything by this author, if I can find the books. They're kind of hard to find um, on eBay. They're very expensive. But this I wanted to share. Uh, I had asked my uh, friends, <laughs> my creepy cocktail hour ladies here on BookTube, if uh, anyone had heard of this author. And uh, Alex, the bookubus, sent me a link to a, uh, a blog, which I will also link below, called Beauty in Ruins from 2013, where... Uh, this blogger interviews Michael Sicilione, whose real name is Mia Cross. That was her pen name. Now, it kind of makes sense, because as I was reading it, I was like, 
I, I really did kind of have a feeling that it was a woman writing under a man's pen name just because of the way it was written. It's a little hard to describe. Not that a man can't write a good female character and vice versa. I'm not saying that. But there were some things, just some things that I noticed. But this is, I found, one more piece of the mystery of this writer that I'm very excited about. First up is an absolutely fascinating author who I met and who I first encountered as Michael Sicilione, but have since come to know as Mia Cross. Tracking her down wasn't easy, but like the search for her books themselves, the effort involved is making that discovery part of the magic of reading. So the author responds in one of this, the first interview question about the, this pen name. The fact is that Michael Sicilione died quite literally a number of years ago, the best way to understand what I'm trying to say is to understand the death, in quotes, the way the family member of an Alzheimer's patient talks about a loved, loved one disappearing in the end stages of the disease. They talk, and not at all metaphorically, of the person as they knew them having died, even though their physical body continues to live on often for years. In my case, someone replaced the personality that died, and that is who is talking to you now, the person I should have been all along, but who's been sublimated and displaced by a personality construct conditioned at birth and for years afterwards by the expectation of others. It's a little hard to tell what the tone of that is. Is it tongue-in-cheek or is it deadly serious? I don't know, but I am super intrigued by this author, so I plan to do more reading of this author. I'm going to track down the books, and, and there aren't many of them, and I will report back here about what I find. So if any of you uh, know this author out of uh, this pen name or maybe another pen name that she wrote under, let me know in the comments below. If you're intrigued to know more, also let me know in the comments below because uh, I would love to talk to other readers about this writer. So I've been watching some movies on Shudder because I do have a subscription. I watched Gator Bait, which is, is like, I'll save that for my drive-in this summer, my drive-in series again, but it's a, it is a real drive-in movie. That was fun. And I also watched, I watched a couple other things, but I, to go with this book, I watched Habit by uh, Larry Fessenden. I may have talked about this movie on this channel before because I really like it. I've seen it a few times. It's a 1997, uh, very, very independent film that uh, Larry Fessenden, who's an indie uh, filmmaker that I really like a lot. I've seen most of his films, I think, by now. Um, he wrote, directed, and acted in the, the leading role. And it's great. It, it's a, and it's, takes place in the 90s in New York, which is another reason why I paired it with the book. It's about a guy who is um, kind of going through a rough time. His father just passed away, His uh, and he's like probably 30 years old, and an artsy guy. You know, he works at a bar, but he's has some other aspirations. All of his friends are like artsy. His apartment is like, and his lifestyle is exactly like what my life and my apartment was at that time. And still is in, in a kind of, a, in a way, you know, a, a very bohemian way of living. He and his girlfriend break up. He's a very nice girlfriend. And it, it's funny because he plays this leading man that these women are attracted to. But I mean, if you, I'm not saying Larry Fessenden isn't a good looking guy because he does have kind of an appeal, but he's got like wild hair and he's missing like like a, two of his front teeth, <laughs> which I'm sure there's a story about that, but he, he's, he, he's pretty like, uh, you know, rumpled, I guess is a nice way of putting it, but he's still getting the ladies, which is kind of funny, but kind of true in a way, but he has a bad problem. He's alcoholic and, and you, it's not like said that he's an alcoholic, but like straight out, but you can tell that he's in probably early stages of alcoholism. His girlfriend breaks up with him and kind of implied because of this and she's a painter but you can tell that she still is holding a torch uh you know they're still getting along he helps her move and on to saint mark's place and he goes to a halloween party and he meets this uh, girl who a young woman who is very uh mysterious and very cool and she's such the 90s chick you know 
I mean, I even had that short hair, you know, dark haircut with those clothes. Like her whole look kind of reminded me in some ways of, well, not just my look, but just girls I knew like that. Uh, her name, she's played by an actress called Meredith Sater. So it says he embarks on a kinky, sex-charged relationship with her. So again, we have a lot of kinky sex in both. The, the, movie, the movie is not as kinky as the book, I have to say. But soon he suffers from a mysterious illness and eventually comes to believe that Anna is a vampire. So I'm not going to give away this movie because it, in a lot of ways it's open to interpretation. It's very much like an art film. It's not your typical vampire movie. So if you're expecting that, you will be disappointed. But if you like uh, artsy indie movies that show all the rough edges in a very enjoyable way, Check out Habit. I really, really like it. I highly recommend it. Check out both of these. Um, check out this dog. <laughs> check out both of uh, Habit and Thirst if you're looking for some good vampire uh, literature and film. I never get tired of vampires. I don't know. It's just something about them. Let me know if you've uh, seen Habit or if you've read Thirst. I would love to hear your thoughts. So that is all I have for today. Little Lucky is sleepy, so hopefully she'll take a nap. And it's a good day for reading, so I'm going to keep reading the Stephen King Werewolf book. And I will see you soon in my haunted library. Bye!